I again wanted to publicize a, a second book by Edmund Gruss. We've already done a review of his book, Apostles of Denial. This is a book he published originally in 1972. The revised edition came out in December of 1975. Jehovah's Witnesses and Prophetic Speculation. Here's what the blurb on the back says. The prophetic claims and interpretations of the Jehovah's Witnesses concerning the second coming or presence of Christ in 1914 and their speculation that Armageddon was due in the mid-70s, 1975 or before, have never been fully examined or refuted. Currently it is taught that Armageddon could occur at any time. Specifically, it is delayed only by the time interval between Adam and Eve's creation. This book was written because the author concluded, after investigation, that the witness's position does not accord with the truth and cannot stand under objective exa examination. The writer challenges the reader with the statement found in the popular witness book, The Truth That Leads to Eternal Life, published in 1968. We need to examine not only what we personally believe, but also what is taught by any religious organization with which we may be associated. Are its teachings in full harmony with God's word, or are they based on the traditions of men? If we are lovers of the truth, there is nothing to fear from such examination. Page 13 of The Truth That Leads to Eternal Life, the Watchtower's all-time bestseller, as far as I know. The blurb continues, if the reader is a Jehovah's Witness or is studying with the Witnesses, will he demonstrate that he is genuinely objective in his search for the truth and is a lover of the truth by his careful examination of what he believes and has been taught in the light of this study? As the quotation above states, if we are lovers of the truth, there is nothing to fear from such an examination. Here's a bit about Gruss himself. Edmund C. Gruss, professor of history and apologetics at Los Angeles Baptist College in Newhall, California, was born in Los Angeles in 1933. He received his A.B. from the Los Angeles Baptist College in 1955 and his B.D. from the Los Angeles Bible Baptist Theological Seminary in 1958. In 1961, he completed his Master of Theology in Bible and Theology at Talbot Theological Seminary in La Mirada, California, and an M.A. in Modern European History from Drake University was added in 1964. In addition to his college and seminary teaching, Professor Gruss has written articles on the cults and given lectures in area churches. In 1970, he published the book Apostles of Denial, an examination and expose of the history, doctrines, and claims of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Interest in the cult field stems from his conversion from the Jehovah's Witnesses in 1950. His wife also graduated from Los Angeles Baptist College and is an elementary school teacher. The family includes two teenage children. Of course, this is 1975. Information. I think Edmund Gross is still alive. There, that makes him about 80, 89 years old. Uh, I'm not sure about that. There's very little information about him online. But these books were extremely helpful. The two books mentioned here, The Apostles of Denial and this one on Jehovah's Witnesses and Prophetic Speculation. I believe this is the first one of Gross I, I read, and he published many others, not just on the Witnesses, but on other cults and the occult later. Here's the contents. After the intro, he has chapter, chapter 2, The Witnesses' Position on the Second Coming of Christ and the End of the World. Then, Chapter 3, An Examination and Refutation of the Witnesses' Position on the 1914 Second Coming of Christ. Chapter 4, An Examination and Refutation of the Witnesses' Position on the 1975 Chronology. And he does a bang-up job, job on that. I think this is probably the best, one of the best sources, I can't say the best, one of the best sources on the 1975 build-up and the speculation wrapped around it not just in the publications, but among the witnesses themselves. And then, chapter 5, The Witnesses' Position on the Last Days and Armageddon, An Illusion of Urgency. And I think that's the thing we should take away from this book. That had I known, for instance, when I was baptized in 1971, that they had 
built up to dates before. I was not clear on that. I, I should have done my homework, but I, I was, well, I was carried away with the illusion, illusion of urgency too. And why did not 1975 bother me more when it went by without incident? probably because I was already convinced by then that the witnesses were right on basic doctrines. So in chapter 5, he deals with all of the periods of uh, Watchtower history, the early Russell days, the latter days of Russell, 1900 to 1919. The, that would cover the Finnish mystery, of course, and then the decades after that, right up until the speculation about 1975 begins in 1966. Here's a sample from chapter 5. The witnesses' position on the last days in Armageddon, an illusion of urgency. The Los Angeles Herald Examiner of July 21, 1969, carried an article with the headline, Armageddon Due in 1970s, Witnesses Told. The paper went on to report, quote, Armageddon, the end of the world for all but Jehovah's Witnesses, is just around the corner, according to Watchtower Society President Nathan H. Knorr, who addressed 81,032 witnesses in the stands and on the playing field yesterday at Dodger Stadium. Although he did not pinpoint the predicted date, nor did narrow it down to the mid-70s, the year 1975 has been specifically mentioned in witness publications. A spokesman for the witnesses conceded that they are not as dogmatic and definite about the 1975 prediction as they were in proclaiming Armageddon's supposed arrival in 1925. I remember I knew nothing about 1925, although I did know something about 14 and the Finnish mystery, but not enough to stop me from diving headlong into the movement. Gruss goes on, the significance of 1975 was first stressed in the release on June 25, 1966, of the new book, Life Everlasting and Freedom of the Sons of God. And here's the direct quote from that book. Pages... 29 and 30. 6,000 years from man's creation will end in 1975, and the seventh period of a thousand years of human history will begin in the fall of 1975 CE. It would not be a mere chance or accident for the reign of Jesus Christ to run parallel with the seventh millennium of man's existence. End of quote. The date was also emphasized in the awake of October 8, 1966, in an article entitled, How Much Longer Will It Be? The front cover of the October 8, 1968 awake carries the words, Is it later than you think? I do believe we had that one hanging around our house about, well, from 1968 onwards, and that might have been the very first awake I ever read before I started studying. Is time running out for this generation? What will the 1970s bring? In the treatment of the subject in the magazine, it ends with the warning, quote, you have no time to lose in making friends with God because time is rapidly running out for this wicked system of things. It is very close to plunging into the chasm of Armageddon. Therefore, take steps quickly to work for survival and for eternal life in God's new order. It is obvious that the witnesses and all those who read or study their writings come under a constant pressure of urgency and the reminder that Armageddon is just around the corner. It is the purpose of this chapter to show that the stress on the last days and the threat of Armageddon have been used first by Russell and Rutherford and then by the Watchtower Society to create an illusion of urgency. If anything has been proven over the past more than 90 years, again this is written at the end of 75. If anything has been proven over the past more than 90 years, it is that these prophets are certainly false ones. Their words have fallen to the earth. And then there's a reference to 1 Samuel 3, 19 in the New World Translation, a text I don't ever remember reading as a witness, by the way, which meant something to us in the light of, of our finally studying all of the past predictions of the Watchtower. It's about Samuel, where we're told that all of Israel knew that Samuel was a prophet appointed by Jehovah because none of his words fell to the ground. Gruss concludes the intro here. The statements which have been made over the years in illustration of the above conclusions are presented chronologically in the following development. Similar statements for other years have been located and could be quoted 
but those which have been used should suffice. And then for the next ten or so pages, he covers all of the decades. From 1877, when Russell published The Three Worlds with Nelson Barber, right up until 1966-68, when the 75 speculation got really moving along. So next time we'll do 1877-1899, The Illusion of Urgency. So I'd strongly recommend Edmund C. Groose, Jehovah's Witnesses, and Prophetic Speculation, a basic library item for all of us who are either in the Witnesses or out and want to reach our friends and family. See you soon.